This is undoubtedly the nerdiest game that I will play all year, and it's just my kind of nerdy. Some of you may be surprised to know that I have a degree in theater, and history, but that's less relevant here, and that I have a familiarity with and appreciation of The Bard. Therefore, when I learned that there was a short RPG game coming out starring some of Shakespeare's greatest heroines, I figured it would be a good thing to jump on, and I enjoyed the ride. This Way Madness Lies, a title referencing a line from the play King Lear, if they do a sequel, Cordelia should definitely be a character, is an RPG developed and published by Zeboid Digital Entertainment responsible for the Cosmic Star Heroine game. While the game has been under development for a fair amount of time, the game's release was only announced about a month before it came to Steam on November 10th, 2022. No other platforms have been confirmed as of yet for the game, although prior Zeboid games have made their way to Switch. The general consensus from players and critics so far is that it is a fun game with a premise that stands out and will certainly appeal to a certain crowd. The game doesn't do anything revolutionary, but is a good time for those interested in what it has to offer. The Stratford-upon-Avon Drama Society is tasked with putting on Shakespeare performances while attending school most of the time. But their other, very important duty alongside that is traveling to the worlds of Shakespeare's plays and protecting them. How, you may ask? Why, by using their magical girl powers to transform and fight. Lately, these worlds have been invaded by various monsters and the worlds are getting warped and altered. Our main character Imogen will have to work to fight against them alongside her classmates Paulina, Viola, Rosalind, Miranda, and Beatrice. Can they work through various different lands and find out what is going on in the Shakespeare worlds before the creatures start coming for their world? Play and find out. The description for the game has a quote saying the game is all killer no filler, and that is pretty much it. The game is snappy with a short runtime, but a lot of events to fit into each moment of the runtime. That being said, they don't neglect the characters. Each of the main party members has times in the story to let them shine. They don't really have any big character arcs or anything, but you will get a good background in who they are and what they're interested in via their dialogue and actions. Every single one of the party members is named after a heroine from a Shakespeare play, and at least based on my recollection, these characters seem like pretty good modern interpretations of the personalities of those characters. Kudos to the writers on that. The writing is charming and has a lot of energy to it which helps propel the narrative on and keep player interest the whole way through, and the chemistry between the characters is also superb. The modern characters do talk in modern English, but the characters from the other worlds talk in either direct quotes or similar speech to Shakespeare's writing in Elizabethan English. This could serve as a barrier for some players if not for the translator they included. Any line written in Elizabethan English has the original writing and is a void translation of the line, which should get the meaning across. I'll admit, this may be my most nitpicky critique ever, but I had several issues with the way they translated classic Shakespearean lines. This translation for Wherefore Art Thou Romeo is lacking, and it's not the only one. But since none of the main character's dialogue requires knowing Elizabethan English, this feature is more for fun, and so it's not a major issue whether you don't understand it or understand it too well. As for gameplay, the combat system is turn-based and each character has a set of skills for use in battle. You have four party members at a time, each with their own unique set of traits and abilities. These range from attacks incorporating fire, ice, wind, earth, light, and dark, to status effects including the standard poison and stun alongside vulnerable and disarm, which do exactly what you'd think they do. Lastly, you have the heals and buffs. All of this is standard, nothing really out of the ordinary. When it comes time to use these abilities though, you must plan carefully because the vast majority of abilities can only be used once until you refresh them by taking a turn to defend. This prevents a player from spamming abilities but also means you don't have to worry about MP or any other limited resource to cast particular spells. On top of this, the characters can go into hyper mode after a certain number of turns which enhances and modifies certain abilities. The next part of the tools at your disposal are the Unite abilities, where two characters join up to perform a single powerful ability. It can only be performed once and becomes more powerful both when a character is in hyper mode or progressively as the battle goes longer. Finally, the game of course has items, but the item system is very specific. You can equip a found item in your backpack, but only a limited number that can be used once every battle. 
The system is straightforward, but given all the abilities, items, boosts, and other powers at play, the battle system holds a surprising amount of depth that you will need to utilize to take down tough foes. I found myself having to strategize throughout the entire game getting characters into hyper mode right at the moment that their powerful spell refreshes or something of that ilk. Mainly with the bosses, but also with some standard enemy groups as well, I needed to do this in order to win. Each enemy has weaknesses and strengths against elements for you to exploit, but you usually face mixed groups of enemies, so you will have to choose who you want to target first and how. I think the battle system in general was a highlight for me, and the best parts of the game were when everything lined up as I was hoping, and I could deliver a whopping amount of damage or weather a rough enemy attack. After battle then, you collect your experience points, and move on. Experience is earned collectively, so you don't need to worry about grinding up particular characters, which is good since they'll be swapping in and out, except Imogen, throughout the game. As you level up, you will gain access to new abilities for the hotbar in battle, and also new traits, passive bonuses that you can equip up to three of at a time. Both of these can be adjusted at any point out of battle, so you can go ahead and make sure everything is to your taste. You can also initiate a battle from the menu screen if perhaps you want to test out some abilities before taking them into the field. The game is pretty good when it comes to information presentation, and you also get a nice overview of each of the enemy's weaknesses and strengths if you tab down during battle. Now, there really isn't any side content to the game, it's just more main story, but there are down moments between the major issues coming up that the team has to deal with. These take the form of small team adventures, the performances of their latest Shakespeare production, and English class when they talk about... Shakespeare! You occasionally are given a choice to impact things, but they are minimal. You will be asked questions though in class and get to show off your Shakespeare knowledge. Or not. It doesn't make a difference either way, except for dialogue. The art of the game is pretty, with its environments especially in the other worlds where I think the majority of the attention was put. The character designs are also really well done, and these are the ones we see most frequently, so that makes sense, especially with the animated transformation cutscenes. That is pretty much the only significant animation in the game, though. The music is truly excellent. They didn't need to go this hard for the soundtrack, but I'm glad they did, and I still have the song stuck in my head. The sound design outside of the music is also quite good with satisfying noises, helping us feel that sense of accomplishment performing certain abilities. The voice lines are entirely limited to battle, so I think there's too little there to be worth discussing. The UI is all easily legible and accessible, but the user experience is slightly hampered when it comes to easy menu functioning. Checking and changing abilities and traits is very common in the game and usually involves multiple characters, but there is no way to switch between characters in the abilities and traits screens. Therefore, you need to back out to select a new character each time you want to check the new abilities they got, and the select doesn't even default to what part of the menu you were just in. It is a minor issue, but it caused me some annoyance, and the tedious nature of changing abilities and traits meant I spent less time working with that system than I would have liked, and that is a major selling point for the game, is this wide range of abilities and traits that you can use. So it feels a little off for this barrier to be there to access this important system. Overall, I enjoyed the presentation, especially the music, but there is still certainly room for improvement. This Way Madness Lies is a snappy RPG with a deeper than expected battle system that stretched my strategic muscles, a rocking soundtrack, a charming cast, and a strong thespian energy. If you're a Shakespeare nerd, this is right up your alley. And if you enjoy RPGs and are looking for a shorter adventure, I think this is a good fit for you as well. I really hope more people give this game a try so I can chat both about what I liked about it and rant about my few annoyances. If you do, feel free to come back here and let me know. But before you go, please give this video a like and or comment and share. Subscribe to join this game-loving community on the channel, but fare thee well, thou art a gallant youth. Have a great day and happy gaming.